What's up and what's happening, TPE Book Family? It's your hosts, Alex and Giovanna, and we are back with another episode of The Book Club. We're excited to be able to continue this conversation with you all as we continue to explore Greg Rochelle's latest book, Think Ahead. We've had a lot of conversation about a lot of the concepts, and today we're going to be talking about free to risk. Uh, I know me and Giovanna were having some uh, conversation uh, pre-production, and this is something that really speaks to us as as leaders. And I know we didn't talk about this uh, particularly, but it's particularly leaders of faith. If you are a person of faith, you're taking a risk each and every day. Just by having faith in what you're in what you believe in, it really steers this mindset that can translate not only from your spiritual walk, but also into your professional and leadership walk. And so I'm excited to have this conversation with you today, Giovanna. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm excited about this conversation as well. And uh, I got so excited about uh, lesson four that I kind of skipped this one. And then Alex was like, hey, we didn't we didn't go through through the risk taking. And I was like, OK, we got to go back. Uh, so yes. we're still on. I will be faithful. Uh, there were three lessons. So lesson five, six and seven that came from I will be faithful. And just so you know, this is coming out of Craig Rochelle's uh, book, Think Ahead. And this is the workbook. You can get this on Amazon um or wherever you purchase books you can actually buy it on amazon and get it on your phone um but make sure that you read the chapters but this workbook is awesome and there's some questions in here i think around risk taking that are super super important for you to consider um alex said that he really liked the, the questions as well um and so i'm super excited to have this conversation today about risk taking and i'm gonna start it off a little bit with just kind of the definition of what is risk um so risk is taking action without knowing exactly what will happen as a result. And I think with that definition, I think we probably just lost some listeners almost. <laughs> because I think most people would say that risk taking is scary. And I would even like I would even go as far as to say is like the generation we're currently de dealing with. They're not they don't want to take risk. It's too scary. It's like, what if I fail or what if I'm not good enough or what if I'm embarrassed when I take that risk? Um, and so I think this is a really, really good topic to follow that last lesson, which every resource um, and prompting is an opportunity. So that was talking about, you know, different opportunities that we have um, when it comes to being faithful. So taking a risk. And I think when you think about risk and faithfulness, like almost kind of opposite. Um, like, I think it's kind of like, okay, they're telling me to be faithful, but if I'm taking risks, like, then I have to be faithful. That's even scarier. Like, that's an even scarier thing to think about is like, what if I take the risk and say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be somebody who's healthy. Well, that means you have to be faithful in that risk, which is faithful in your eating journey, faithful in working out. And so I think that word risk or like taking a risk or risky is a word that today teens really struggle with. Um, and I think the generation that we work with consistently, it really struggles with. And I think that's even why we have a hard time finding leaders in the restaurant. Um, we, it used to be like everybody, we'd say, hey, who wants to be a leader? And like everybody's hand would raise and they're like, I want to do it like me, pick me. Um, and nowadays, I think we struggle finding great leaders because there's really great leaders out there who are afraid to take that leap. What are your thoughts on that? No, I, I definitely agree, but I kind of wanted to touch on something you said earlier. And I guess this is going to, I guess, kind of really steer us in the direction that we want to go in our conversation. Yes, absolutely. There are risks in doing new things. Just use the health, being healthy example as one thing. We know that there's risks that will force us to be faithful to certain things, but there's also risk in not taking the risk. You know what I mean? Like there's adverse uh, things that can happen when you don't step up to take the risk that you need to do to advance or to better yourself. Um, a lot of times uh, I like to think about there's not a lot of neutral in life. You, either you're going forward or you're going backwards. And, and when you don't take those calculated risks or the strategic bets or the strategic risk, rather, you are at risk of going backwards. So which would, would you I would rather fail forward than than to, to fall backwards. You know what I mean? So I think the idea of, of, of taking risks as a leader is critical. And hopefully during our conversation today, we can kind of convince some people to jump off the ledge a little bit in their leadership then, uh, and, and then take some risks. I think it also is like one thing that you were just talking about is like 
even just saying out loud, like, I want to be healthy. Like there's accountability that follows that. And so a lot of times people aren't willing to take the risk because of the accountability that's going to come with that risk. Um, so like becoming a leader, for example, I don't really want to take that leap of faith and say, hey, I want to be a leader in the business because the accountability that comes with being a leader in the business, um, you know, hey, I don't I don't want to start looking for a new job because, you know, what if if I if I go to my employer and I'm like, hey, I just want you to know, like I'm, I'm seeking some other opportunities. Well, what's the accountability that comes with that? Like they're actually going to kind of follow up because now you might be putting them in a bind. So they're going to start training up other people to do your job. And so I think with risk taking a lot of times, like um, the first thing in risk taking is committing, committing to taking the risk. And I think we look at it kind of backwards sometimes. I've actually done a, there's a tool on this that I use, but like we start with confidence. Like, are we confident enough that I can go find a better job? Or am I confident enough that I can be healthy? Whereas I think the first step in taking a risk is not, do I have the confidence to do it? No, the first step is just committing. And committing is a lot of times committing is just saying it out loud to somebody else and saying, hey, can you hold me accountable to this? But I think people are afraid to take that risk. And I think people are afraid to take their risk and I'll take it maybe a step further or maybe a, a step first further is I think you got to know in what areas of your life professionally and personally that you need to take risk in. Um, I, I tend to think that, you know, maybe people don't understand their priorities and they may not understand the areas in their life that is worth taking a risk on and i know we've been kind of dwelling on this idea of health and i think that's common to a lot of people but there's a lot of risk that we can take that, that go beyond that that i think that are fruitful and so i think a, a good a healthy exercise is to look at your life and look at areas and like and take an inventory of the things that you believe that are stagnant or that you're getting diminishing returns on and figuring out what risk can you take in those areas you know, I think that um, I think a lot of people, whether that's wanting to be more financially uh, aware or they want to or they have big goals, they want to provide for their families or they they have just these this list of things that go on and on and on. And I think sometimes I'll just kind of say this a little bit. We may take for granted our experience in the business. Like, you know, we've been doing this for 20 plus years. So I think we just naturally feel maybe when the when we need to make a risk or when we need to shake things up. But well, a lot of times newer leaders may not have that the the wherewithal or the or the understanding to know where they uh, need to take a risk at. So what would you think would be a good starting place if you were a new leader today let's let's take away all those 20 years of honor that you have um you know that you put on display often here at tpe and in your in your um day-to-day -day life but if you were looking in the leader as a leader right now in the business where would you start in in terms of taking a risk you no know, kind of putting you on the spot on the spot a little bit well i mean honestly i think there, well, there's two things I would I want to answer with this question. I think the first thing is I would have to put in my mind that like failure is actually not taking the risk. Because I think a lot of leaders see like taking a risk is like, what if I fail? Right. So I would have to change my mindset as a new leader of like, actually, me not taking a risk in this area would cause me to fail. So I think that would be the first thing is, is like, take that as my mindset. And I think the second thing is I would say take a take a, a risk on developing your, your the people around you. Like, what is that gonna cost you? Like, what if what if the person to your left or your right doesn't become a leader or doesn't move into the next level or doesn't become even just better at what they do? It's not gonna happen, honestly. Like, if you start to coach and pour into people, you're going to see results of that. Like there, there will be fruit. There's not like, that's not going to fail. Like there's no reason for that to fail. And I think a lot of our leaders, you know, they don't pour into leaders because they're like, well, they're leaving in six months or, well, you know, they've kind of reached the, the point to where they're a great bagger. So I don't really need to help them with anything. I'm like, we always have something to learn and everybody has some, I mean, uh, Dan Kathy, he would wear a name tag um, and it says like in training, right? Because we're all still in training. And so I would say take a, a risk to develop one person, just one. Like who's that person that's at the top of your list that you're like, man, this person could be a rock star. 
And I think with that person, one thing that I'd really focus on with them is talk to them about taking risks. Like, you know, kind of that tree of like, I'm going to pour into you, but hey, but what, who's that one person that you could pour into? And so talking to them about taking a risk as well, um, whether it was a risk to be a leader or a risk to pour into somebody else, um, because I think that's where I was telling you this. And I, 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 you know, I think I mentioned it already. It's like the generation coming up, they're afraid to take risks. And so I think as, as senior leaders, that's our job is to go to them and say, hey, it's OK. Like if you fail, like actually not trying is more failing in my book. Like, I, I don't mind when somebody tries something out and it doesn't work. What I do mind is when I don't see them trying. Like, that to me is ultimate failure. So I think those are kind yeah. of the things I would focus on. Yeah, no, that's good. That reminds me of something, you know, particularly I feel like this generation and plus us a little bit too really deal with this uh, thing that people call imposter syndrome. And, you know, everybody... Uh, feels like they're not adequate or they're not good enough. Um, but what they need to realize is I heard this on a, on a webinar a long time ago. It, it's the one step rule. You know, generally, if you're one step ahead of the person to the left or to the right of you, they want to hear what you have to say. So if you're a leader of any form, whether that's a developer or a trainer or whatever, and the person to you, uh, to the left or to the right of you isn't, you have something or you've done something that they are wanting to do. So you have value to their lives. Like, don't take for granted your experiences, the things that you've gone through. All of our journeys are different. And I think we all have something to learn, even with us. You know, we've been doing this uh, for not a, quite the same amount of time. You've been here, you know, just a little bit longer than me. But it's just one of those things where I know I can learn from you. You can learn from me. And the fact that we have the... Uh, uh, I want to say humility. Yeah, I guess that's the word to use. The humility to be able to recognize that, man, Javana has value that I can extract and incorporate into my life. Mm -hmm. And then I have value to get impart into you. I think the fact that we are, we have the, the, the risk, to, I, it's a risk to listen to you, right? It's a risk for you to listen to me, you know, but I think we have enough respect for each other to do that. And I think that's not, that's mm -hmm. not exclusive to us. That can be with anybody uh, that's that's listening. There's somebody in your store. There's a Sally, a Mike, or a, a John, or Dan somewhere in your restaurant that needs to hear from you. So take that risk when you're on break, um, when you're when you're uh, working, making drinks together. Or well, okay, I'm sorry. Let me qu clarify that we work in a restaurant, so when we're making uh, soft drinks, beverages, Coke products. Okay, don't don't take it too. You know, not saying that, but when when you're in a place to where you can have conversation and, and extend and build a relationship, that person may not tell you that in the moment, but two months from now, three months from now when you see the elevation in their performance, it's because you took a risk on them. And they'll, and watch, I, I, I can tell you, people come to me all the time, and I'm sure this happens to you, Giovanna, where they say, man, you know when you told me that two months ago when we was making, we were bagging together, and you were talking to me about a concept, man, I started thinking about that and figuring out how I can do it, and you just see the light bulb go off. That was, was a result of a risk. You know, when you see successes in your business, most of the time they're associated with some level of risk that somebody took and had an idea and made it happen. So no, that was really good, Javada. I think too, just like, you know, when you are taking a risk, be vulnerable when it doesn't work out. Like that tells, like if, you, if you're afraid to like that imposter, imposter syndrome, right? If you're afraid, like maybe I don't know enough or maybe, maybe I'm not good enough. You know what? You're not good enough and you don't know enough. Like, I don't know enough. You don't know enough. Dan Cathy doesn't know enough. If you listen to Dan Cathy, he talks about how he listens to podcasts. Like, two hours a day, he reads and listens to podcasts because he doesn't know enough, right? And so you are going to make mistakes as you take risks. But when you do, man, what makes you a really great leader and somebody who people want to listen to and want to follow is when you take a risk and it doesn't work out and you say, hey, I failed at that. And I, like... Or, hey, I didn't do, we didn't get the result that we wanted. What can we do to make that better? Like, there's no reason to try to cover it up or, you know, be like, oh, I took a risk and it, and it was a total failure. Like, throw that failure out in the open and be like, hey, I took a risk and it totally flopped. And I've had to do that before. And I say that out loud to everybody else. And they're kind of like, and I'm like, and it's okay because I'm human and I don't know enough. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. So just to kind of, you know, wrap us up on this idea, I want to just kind of, you know, go over some of the things that we talked about. And then number one, we talked about being committed. Um, taking a risk will involve you to commit to whatever it is that you're that you're doing. It's one thing just to say it, but you have to say it and unpack the things that you're going to have to be disciplined in, that you're going to have to forward faith to, um, and that you have to really, really sink into. Uh, we also talked about just identifying those areas that you need to take the risk in. Um, and don't try to do too much. Find one area and be really good at taking the risk in the one area. Um, and then the, the, you know, one of the last things we just talked about, which I think is a big one, is being vulnerable. Sometimes it won't work. And in it not working, you know, you have to hang your hat on the fact that you, at least you tried. You would have never known if it would have worked or if it didn't work if you didn't try. So, Javon, will you close us out with the challenge? All right. So our challenge for this episode is take one risk. Take one risk. Identify what it is that's causing you to not be able to take a risk in that area. So whatever area it is in your life, whether it's personal or professional, figure out what's holding you back from taking the risk and take that one risk and see what results can happen if you just take that one risk. Like, and it might just be planting a seed. Like I was talking about leadership development. Like it might just be like, Hey, I'm going to work with Johnny on, on drinks, Coca-Cola drinks, uh, yeah. sweet tea, unsweet tea, lemonade. Like I'm going to work with Johnny on drinks. And I want to see Johnny only right now. He can only do 120 cars by himself, but I want to see if I can get him to 150. So I'm going to coach him today. And then I'm going to tell him, Hey, Johnny, I want, I want you to see if you can get to that level and see what can happen if you take a risk or a bet on somebody and say, hey, I'm gonna help make them better. So just one risk, one risk, figure out what's keeping you from taking the risk and then push yourself and see what results can come from that. That's that's good, Giovanna, thank you so much. So the, the challenge of the week is to take one risk, identify what that risk is and make it happen. Thank you guys so much for tuning into uh, this week's uh, book study. Um, we're we're going to work on getting a whole lot more consistent in this area and delivering the content, which I think we've been doing a pretty good job considering what our real lives uh, look like apart from this. Um, but if you haven't already, head over to tpenow.com and sign up for this month's Lead Better. Uh, Javana and I will be hosting uh, uh, Systems and Processes Part 2. Um, and when we look forward to having a great conversation around those items, uh, next month we have a special guest coming. I'm not going to reveal who that special guest is yet, but uh, if you enjoyed last month, Lead Better with Kyle Ashby, you'll definitely enjoy this one as well. Um, we look forward to connecting with you guys. And as always, guys, peace.